Panasonic. Like the processor? Right. Hey. He's Well, I'll ask them because they're, they're chatting me a lot about it. Yep. Eric. He's got audio. This is Mississippi. Columbia, Mississippi. I, I wanted to get out of the house for a second. I was looking, you have a TI, looks like, back there on the shelf. Very nice. I, I should go sit out on my porch. You can see, like, the Rocky Mountains in the background. Really? Maybe, maybe I'll do that. <laughs> you can see the south side of Chicago on my deck there. <laughs> <laughs> I've been there. If it was Tim Franklin who talked about the South Side, uh, I have something of interest. I'm a genealogist, okay? And my uh, great-great-grandfather uh, at the World's Fair in about 18-something uh, or other, way at the top, uh, he was uh, crowned, I guess, or whatever. They laid a moniker on him, Savior of the South Side. He went up a church. Yeah. <laughs> he and a, another fellow went up into the church with a bucket brigade. They put out the fire in the church, and uh, nothing burned past that church. And so they laid that during, moniker uh, here in the south During side. the Great Chicago Fire? Sir. Was it during the Great <laughs> Chicago Fire, or was it the uh, World's Fair? You said it was a World's Fair, right? Yeah, his great great grandfather, and his name was William Henry Haskell, and he's in uh, some of the books about the fire and so on. Nice. Okay, enough of that. That's a little bit before my time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mine too. But it was his. Uh, it was his daughter that was my uh, great grandmother, and uh, passed some stuff. Uh, I think a watch, for instance, that he owned. Pass that on to me. And I think I broke nice. it. Pocket nice. watch. That's cool. I do. I didn't know I put my hand up. <laughs> that was inadvertent. <laughs> there's there's another face I had in mind. Hello, Jim Geary. We got Hello. a lot of your programs uh, in Logical. Oh wow, very good. Yeah, Are you the you're you... the inventor? No, you're the inventor. I mean, I did Logical, yes. Yeah, but okay. it's uh, since it runs a lot of games. There's a couple of discs on there from you guys. Oh, very nice. Are you father or son? I'm the I'm the father. Right? My okay. my son Charlie is my beta tester. Okay, great. Very good. Who's that? Oh, I, oh right, right, right. I was just going to say, I have a little contest going over on the MC10 group for one of these things. This is my mug. Cool. Called the uh, Type in Mania mug. Uh, so That's far, my son and I are the only contestants who have joined, but uh, it's for playing one of my uh, my latest uh, compiled uh, MC10 games. So, um, you uh, plan to be at the gonna... uh, plan to be at the Coco Fest, Jim? Uh, when is it going to be this year? November. November. Uh, probably not. No. <laughs> okay. I have to well, teach. Uh, I teach at university, so. And I'm on the East Coast. Uh, I'm located on Cape Breton Island off uh, the northern tip of Nova Scotia. Wow. Well, my son's birthday is on uh, November 11th, so. 
Okay. Uh, okay. We'll be here. So, Mark, Let's you getting that. anywhere and why we can't hear you on any of the streams? Guru. <laughs> I think I just figured out where the hand button is, though. Oh, there we go. So when y'all do your meetings, are y'all doing everything through blue jeans? Are y'all meeting in person? How are y'all doing these? Oh, he's up there. I see him. Uh, the the uh, Schomburg, what was that? Schomburg Public Library. The uh, this uh, organization started at the Glenside uh, Library in Glendale Heights, Illinois. And we moved up to uh, Schomburg, Schomburg Public, which was, a, of course, a much larger, and it was free, absolutely free. We like well, free. How will you be able to start up going again here in the next couple of months, you know, assuming they open it up? <laughs> I was just I was just looking at the drive because that we will probably drive up when we come in November, but it's like a it works out about eleven hours, give it eleven and a half, eleven hours depends on how many laws I want to break. Um, coming up, but uh, but uh, it yeah, it's a little it's a little clip, but I'm glad. How often do y'all meet? Once a month. Yes, please, please, please let me know because this is uh, uh, I love this stuff, um, and I, I love this is the most sustainable of all of my hobbies. <laughs> well, okay. right, Tony. Right, and I'll put in my outlook and. Once you get the newsletter, you've uh, got all the information you'll need, I believe. That's wonderful. Are there dues or anything I need to pay? I'm good if I do. It's just um, dues dues uh, always open, but you don't have to be a dues paying member to be a member. You're going to get the mailings well, anyway. If the only reason you might pay dues is because you might want to vote. 
well, I believe in supporting things that I think it's good to be active uh, and support things. Right. You can. You got it. Yeah, we used to have a uh, statue that said, help support your local whatever, cocoa club, so well, whatever. It's just that as all the cocoa clubs around the country were dying off, we did our level best uh, to become uh, worldwide. Uh, Glenside did. So we'll, t we'll write that story up uh, soon, I'm told. Excellent. Yeah, years okay. ago, I used to strum a guitar with uh, Curtis Boyle. Yep. And uh, I can't do that anymore. My hands don't work. So I've got these two guitars I'm going to pass on to my granddaughter. She's already playing the violin, and she owns a mandolin. Nice. Got to get her into strings. Those were good days. Yeah. No, we had some really good jam sessions. Rick Eland was in some of those, too. <laughs> you had to let him know. <laughs> I was hoping people would forget that. <laughs> of course, Tony's unique rendition of House of the Rising Sun was a highlight every year during those jazz yeah. Tony, huh? Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Um, like I say, it's only my son and I have uh, put in high scores for you so far. But, uh, yeah, if somebody else posts and uh, beats our scores, then they're going to get a mug. And, yeah, I'll, I'll announce that tonight. Are you, are you, you guys are planning to be on here until uh, 9 o'clock, uh, your time? I see. Well, if there's something to announce, I'll come and announce it. The game can be. Well, well I'll see. I'll, I'll see if I can put something up here. Where's the chat? Okay, well, there's chat. Okay, very good. Uh, jail break. He played online. Ripped and mule. Jim, I, I hope Here. you got my uh, notice that uh, I went to uh, the candy list and entered uh, the 24 names that you gave me. And uh, I don't know what uh, to expect for a response. That wouldn't be coming from me. But uh, if you know where to go to, check it out and see if there's any there. Guys, I am – I'm sorry to minute cut in. I'm fixing to have to run back in. I really wanted to hop in there and say hey and – my name is Lloyd Thompson. I look forward to uh, uh, hanging out in the upcoming next meeting. And uh, thank you guys for letting me uh, join you for the roof. And um, I'm excited. This is, I'm really pumped to be around like minded folks uh, who, who like this stuff. So, but uh, I just really wanted to hop in there and just say hey. So, hey. Okay, we got to have, you did send in your email address, Lloyd? Yeah, I, I put it in the. I put it in the uh, chat. I put my phone number, email, and my, my snail mail address also. I actually have two emails I put in there. They're almost identical. One's live and one's Gmail. Okay, thank you. So, but uh, it's good seeing you guys. And 
look forward to it. It's going to be fun. Okay. I've got a 102, which is uh, kind of a laptop-y thing, and then I've got a Coco 2 with a... Uh, I've got the um, um, ex sidecar expansion, the um, multi-pack. Um, I've got a Coco Estes and... Uh, um, yeah, yeah, that's that's it. And uh, then I'll comment on the TI. I've got an old time. No, it's not. This is not a TI thing, but uh, I've got a uh, 99.48 that's kind of. I've got a Tippy and some other stuff in it. So and some Commodores and some Apples and uh, all, all kinds of stuff that my wife says is junk, and I say it's good stuff. So <laughs> it's all good. I know how that is. <laughs> Yeah. Jim, I have Jim Brain. I've got to yep. ask you uh, that oh. computer is just stuck up in the air. Uh, what is that? It looks reminds me of a Sinclair, the C eighty eight. Sorry, Jim. Yeah, I'm looking. I don't see it. Oh yeah, that looks very. Is that a one hundred or one hundred two? Looks like a one hundred two. Rebranded it basically. Right. I think the the one hundred two was the last the last last. Uh, that had actual Bill Gates code in it. I think that's true. I think that's true. What what did what did the 102 save to? When you did your saves, what did it save it to? Not sure how well they come out in this video, but they're back there somewhere. <laughs> that looks more like San Francisco from this side. Yeah, it's kind of a cloudy, overcast day here right now, so. Uh, <laughs> but, you know. I Jim see the Bray. Rocky Mountain house tops. That looks nice. Oh, damn, that's good from there. There's, wow. There's, <laughs> well, um, the the house across the street from me is pretty big. It's the biggest house in the neighborhood. The others, you know, are more modest in size, <laughs> as is mine. <laughs> hey, Jim, the reason I asked is, uh, that, is that uh, machine looked like the Sinclair Z88. It saved to EPROMs. Okay, and uh, therefore, they never lost any data. You couldn't lose data save into an EPROM. Let's see. Oh, gosh, yeah. Only and, which... Uh, and you have a switch to turn it on and off and uh, to, to turn the, the power to the RAM. But it, um, I mean, I know some four AA batteries. It is, it's unreal. Um, yeah, it's like I, a month or something, isn't it? I remember. I'm sorry. It goes forever. Okay.
Okay. Yeah. Is that the one that has the video interface with it as well, Jim, or is that a different one I'm thinking of? Yeah, because I'd had a disk drive and the video connection, if I remember. That's a pretty big unit there for your Model 100. <laughs> oh my well, as that's a... Sinclair started it up using uh, Z80 microprocessors. And then they came up uh, before Macintosh came out with a uh, 68,000. And uh, when they uh, developed the uh, Z88, they went back to the Z80. And they asked Clive, why? Why didn't you... Uh, Continue with the 68,000. He says for a word processor, a spreadsheet, and a database, you don't need anything more than a Z80. Matter of fact, he says, I used it only because I couldn't find a 4-bit processor I like better. <laughs> mm -hmm. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's the one. No. <laughs> the little 102 has a built-in modem also, and mine came with a, a built-in modem and the, and the breakout cable that goes to, you know, just to an RJ11 um, jack for, for your phone. And then um, it also came with a cable, which is exactly the same cable for the Coco 2 or 3 or 1 for a cassette. So it's, it's identical. I think it's great. I remember. What did you say? And it works good. It's actually not near as uh, near as picky as, as far as having to fumble with the tone, uh, uh, the tone and the volume on the cassette player. Um, as as the coca seems a little bit more comfortable to that, but then again, I also found that I've had better luck. Like I guess I had a, I had a, 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 a I think it's the eighty two Campbell's model is a Radio Shack computer recorder, but uh, I have a GE, just a straight GE uh, computer cassette recorder, and it's not it does a lot better job I think than the Radio Shack one does in some ways. But uh, I still I still use the Radio Shack one because I like to keep everything together. I'm a little OCD like that. I think the GE worked good because uh, the audio response, when uh, you first hit it with audio, didn't cause the uh, input to bounce up and down. It was uh, quick. Fred, what's the temperature? Where I am? Yes, sir. Hey, oh, um. Mm, I don't know, 65 or something like that. <laughs> wow. Well, it's, uh, That's I'm reasonable. Hard. Yeah, I, I mean, like I'm just inside in a T-shirt and I'm pretty comfortable, so, you know. Like in the 80s here.
Sashimi. Thanks. Yeah, me either. Eichard. It's amazingly similar to Jason's last name. <laughs> I'm surprised no one's asked me yet how to pronounce my last name. People usually get it wrong. <laughs> um, right, what's the correct way of saying it? It's it's Provencia. 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 Yep. Avanca? Okay, that's cool. <laughs> Fine. <laughs> that's why you identify people with dyslexia. People have a hard well, time accepting that there is a last uh, name uh, that's pronounced uh, like some uh, 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 someone's part of an family. Yeah, I, I, uh, people often ask me, you know, is your name Italian? What's the, uh, you know, is nationality or, you know, origin of your name? And uh, so, um, I guess to the surprise of um, some people, uh, actually, it originally was French Canadian. Um, so uh, my ancestors came down from Quebec about 150 years ago and settled in upstate New York. And, uh, and, uh, but after they came down, the spelling and pronunciation changed. So it doesn't look French anymore. Um, it's like Jack originally, Kerouac. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, originally it was like Provence or something like that. So if, uh, any of you have spent time like in Quebec, I don't know, but, uh, there's, uh, quite a few Provence up in Quebec, uh, and, uh, they're distantly related to me. And where are they from? New York, France. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, upstate New York. Um, that's where my father's family is is from. Um, Rochester. Yeah. Or the, the Adirondack region. Oh. Yeah. I used to live in Rochester myself. Rochester. Okay. Yeah, that's like western. Yeah. Um, been to my Rochester. 11th, my eleventh great grandfather. Uh, came from England. His name was uh, William Brewster. And uh, in 1620, he come over on the Mayflower. And that's why we finally got here. And that's uh, a few, you know, like 150 years before this was the United States. You were early. Yeah, we yeah. hadn't been. <laughs> yeah, I well, told different the, branches of my yeah, family go back different, different ways, too. I mean, I think I have some Mayflower ancestors, too, somewhere. Like my father's mother's side or something. Hey, that's cool, cousin. <laughs> I think one of my relatives may have used the Mayflower Moving Company at one point. So, <laughs> <laughs> I I hope this yeah, stuff got to its destination. You know, just don't well, move to Texas. If you don't want your name messed up. I. Uh. Well, my my last we believe my family's last name was Aland, and it was changed to with a U, and then we moved to Texas, and so it became Uland, just like uh, my grandparents' side of the family was the D berries, and I didn't realize for many years that that was the D berries that you read about all the time. <laughs> so, like I say, don't move to Texas if you want people to know how to pronounce your name, because it ain't gonna be that way anymore. <laughs> I believe they actually had a uh, I got a dictionary for, so that people in uh, New York could talk to Texans. <laughs> Makes sense. There'd be words it's, in there like uh, "far." It's, okay, um, <laughs> "far." It means to shoot or discharge a fire iron. Fire <laughs> iron, yeah. Ready? In other words, far. halt, halt, or all far. Huh. I'm sorry, I was, I'm fixing to have to, I've got to jump into something else here, and uh, I'm, I'm glad to have met you guys, and I look forward to meeting y'all the next, seeing y'all the next meeting, and uh, I look forward to hopefully making a bunch of friends and building a bunch of great relationships, so uh, be looking for those emails and that newsletters, but uh, thank you so much for letting me join you guys this evening, I'm excited, all right?
God bless y'all. Take care. See y'all next time. Next time. All right. Bye-bye. Hmm. So how many of you people have uh, more than one PC or uh, Tandy computer set up? Oh, I have 13. Uh, we... I'll start with myself. <laughs> I have yeah, but zero. <laughs> I have zero. My wife has reduced me in space so much that I run off a IBM type a laptop with a VCC, the uh, emulator. That's how I've been uh, working for a bunch of years now. Time for a new wife? Uh, <laughs> I That'll alive. fix the problem. <laughs> I wouldn't be alive if, uh, if I had lost her. <laughs> oh. Um, I, have, I have three people threes, but two of them are dead, so, yeah. <laughs> the doctor's... The doctors whispered in her ear and said uh, three years ago that I wouldn't make it to my birthday. I'm going to celebrate the third one here in July. That's good. All right. Who has more than two up? <clears throat> more than... Yeah, up and running or, you know, able to turn on. Oh. Yeah. I got hey, Ron. Can... I do too. <laughs> two hey. Coco 3s, three Coco 2s. Yeah, one model 100 and model 102 all running. <laughs> oh boy, I hope you're in a big house. I've no. got 1,100 square feet with no basement or attic, so that's my well, problem actually, here. The, the Coco <clears throat> tubes they actually sit on top of each other. <laughs> oh, all right. Who has their original Coco from when they originally bought it back in the 80s? I wish I had. I have my original MPI. I have my original. I have my original MC10. I have that, that too. too. I, I have I, my original Dungeons of Daggerath cartridge. It, original my original Coco was my first computer. I'll have to check. I'm not sure if I have my original Coco too. I, if I do, it's stashed away somewhere in a storage box somewhere. Um. Yeah, my first Coco was a Coco 16K Coco 2 in 1983. Is it gray? It's gray? No. Uh, no, Coco, Coco 2, two no, it was white. Oh, sorry, yeah. it's Coco 2, okay. My first January Coco 1 was uh, 128K. Coco one. Those Coco 1s with uh, low serial numbers go pretty good at the Coco Fest. <laughs> I had a Coco one that I first bought um, for three hundred bucks. It had a um, upgrade, uh, one hundred twenty-eight k the easy way. It was a kit put on so that you could do uh, bank switching with the RAM. Excellent. Remember that? Yep. Yep. Yeah. So. I still got the case. Oh, go ahead. Yep. It had a. I, uh, I think it did both bank switching and uh, page switching. It had a Mark Data um, keyboard, and I I got another computer just like it. So I don't have my original, but I have one that looks the same, and I have the same MPI. So it has the I old feeling. I still got the case of mine. <laughs> yeah, I was I was so poor. All the machines I bought were resold and upgraded. To get bigger and better ones, so I have my old DMP 105 still. <laughs> I've got a gray one here that's 4267 for its serial number. That seems nice and low. I have a 00016. Oh, but oh. Says that you know, it Holy doesn't make any difference Holy because cow. they uh restart it over and over. So. Probably not that old. I assume I Lee Veal still has his original 0001 one that he showed off at the fest years back. Oh, oh hey, Curtis. Hey. Yeah, I don't have my original Coco. I had a 4K D board Coco one I bought in 1981, but when I moved to an apartment in 1989, it uh, didn't survive the move. Some stuff in the moving truck fell off and it got crushed, and the motherboard was cracked and everything else. I had to 
Well, by that time, I had a COVID free, so I just stuck with it. That's what happened to my, uh, what happened to my 8CM515 Magnavox monitor. I, it didn't survive a trip across the country. It uh, got smashed. See, my bad. monitor did survive. I have that exact same model. That's still working in the other room. So I was really sad when that monitor hit the dust. It, <laughs> it was a, that was a nice monitor. Back in the day, those were premium. What we what what was uh, everyone's first monitor for the uh, Coco? Cape Hart TV. Uh, 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 our living room TV set. Oh, yeah, very good. Yeah, wood grain floor TV. model TV set. That was mine. I had the twelve inch TV Am Deck Amber with the window screen glued by the factory over the tube to make it higher contrast. Oh, mesh or something. Yeah, I was. Re don't ever try to clean one of those. <laughs> <laughs> it is. It's like yeah, it's to cut down the blade. Let's just cut it off with the razor contract. blade. Mr. Dave, you had your hand raised too, I think. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, drop by, say hi to everyone, make a brief appearance. Hey, Alan. See ya. What was your first, what, go ahead. I was just going to ask Dave uh, what his first Coco was. Oh, I had um, Coco 2 16K, and I think by the end of the weekend I had the, the memory full with my first program on it. And I, I went a long time on a, on a mini black and white TV from the Sears. Until I got the uh, the big floor model wood cabinet, like Curtis. How many have uh, typed in a program and um, somebody turned it off for you, or um, you accidentally turned it off? <laughs> <laughs> Several times. <laughs> and then, uh, and then what? What's really cool is you, you turn it back on, thinking it would still be there. Uh, like, no, I didn't know. I didn't think that. I knew uh, it was gone. Uh, Well, yeah, and then you, in the MC10, you have the RAM pack wobble to, to blame for that uh, occasionally as well. The, the first. Mm -hmm. My ex well, there was a secret to, for those. The secret to running those things is you had to have mineral oil on the connector, and then you wouldn't lose your data. But. Hmm. I, though I put it in magazines, not enough people read about it. That's what we it used works. at Motorola for our radios. Because we had plug-in boards. My ex-wife used to turn mine off and lose my programs. That's why she's my ex. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, I, I, I still lose. I still lose work sometimes, though. I mean, in fact, just yesterday I was working on this uh, program. And uh, and I was using uh, the SDC to store it on uh, store it on an SD card, and I uh, swapped that into my laptop, and then swapped it back. And I don't know what happened, but somehow the file got corrupted and lost like a week's worth of work. So oh, you didn't eject. <laughs> still happens. Yeah, still, still happens. I still lose work sometimes. Um, How many people have backups of their SD card? <laughs> I should. I do. <laughs> Yep. I got four. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> well, I, I try have to one report. I uh, forget sometimes. <laughs> I learned. I learned from uh, uh, the Chicago. Uh, what was he? Chicago mayor, who was uh, save early and save often. Of course, instead of saving, they talk votes. Vote often. Yeah. Well, if you uh, finish your work, if you finish your work, Guillaume Major will save it for you. Right. Never look at that, a good crisis go to light waste. Four oh eight. That's out here, isn't it? Look. In Arizona. No, that's 480. Oh, it's 480, yeah. I see a, a Jay White. Jay White, are you that's a me. member? 
No, I'm not. Remember? Oh, no, I'm uh, not. Did, uh, report right into Jim uh, Brain right now. Got it, Jim? Mm-hmm. I joined oh, I the pre yeah, I, I guess I am signed up. I didn't know if there was like dues involved or any of that. Good, but no, I get the newsletter. Then dues. You wouldn't want Canadian money anyway. <laughs> <laughs> about, about eighty cents uh, American for one dollar Canadian right now. I think it's uh, one Big Mac to uh, ten Tim Hortons. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the weather. Not converted. Ooh. Can you do that at Coco Fest? I'd like to buy some more of your stuff too. So. The forty percent discount for all Canadians. Too, about, something like that happened to me too. About twenty-five years ago, I actually visited Toronto and I went to a restaurant and. For whatever reason, not sure why, they didn't do any currency conversion, so everything was one-to-one. So I paid for the meal in American dollars because, like an idiot, I didn't bring Canadian money with me. And uh, and I, I lost like money on that transaction. And then they gave me change back in Canadian money, which I lost money oh. on that side of the transaction, too. And so I was <laughs> – the, the, the meal cost like three times what it should have cost. <laughs> <laughs> but but now you have collectible cur- collectible uh, coins though, right? Oh yeah, I, I actually have a decent amount of Canadian currency uh, in my coin collection. So uh, my, so yeah, it, it's it's nice. It looks pretty. Yeah. <laughs> it also depends on when you came up too, because it was a brief. Well, there was a time in the '70s, and there was another time just about 10, 15 years ago where the Canadian dollar was actually worth more than the American for about a year too. So it, oh, it yeah, can it can out. go both ways. To this what day, does? if you. If you if you find something on eBay, if you're selling something on eBay and you find one already there and you click sell sell similar, and that thing came from Canada, eBay takes the money in Canadian dollars. It doesn't convert it, so you put your U.S. price and no, it's Canadian dollars. And then when you see the listing, they have converted it to American money, then U.S. dollars, and so now the price is much lower than what you typed in when you put it up for sale. I've uh, caught that recently. Yeah, what yeah. I just I made a trip to just made a trip to Montreal a couple of years ago, and so uh, that replenished my uh, my supply of Canadian money collection. <laughs> I live in Arizona now, and I used to live in Rochester, New York. And in Rochester, you know, you you'd be walking around and see money on the ground, pick it up, and, and it would be a Canadian on occasion. Unfortunately, he ran out of Red Bull. 
in uh, I, uh, Arizona, I went to, you don't find that. Yeah, I, I, I went to college in Vermont, so I, I would occasionally get Canadian uh, coins and chains, you know, whenever I bought something uh, in Vermont. So who was that? Right. Yeah, that was probably was at about seventy five cents, like about buck thirty, buck thirty five to the dollar. Now it's down to a buck twenty four, I think, right now, so Yeah, here's a toonie. Or you could use a debit or a credit card and bypass uh, cash altogether. Yeah, that's what I usually do. Yeah. I'm, I'm all set. Well, if your cash is too heavy at the show, if you want to, like, dump it off on somebody, I'll volunteer. <laughs> I'm always here to help you out, Jim. <laughs> You can get rid of your coins in our vending machines, don't worry. Oh, excellent. Not up my Public is in Florida. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty well true. You mean, you mean iced tea, or what do you mean? Iced tea? tea? That's a southern thing. Oh, yeah, we do that. We also have lemon, thing, though. It's Georgia, kind of mandatory to have that. lemon in there, too. <laughs> you want cold tea is what you want, not, not iced tea. <laughs> That's a sin against nature and God. <laughs> cold you just need tea. to drink oh, you know, overpowered <laughs> beer like the rest of us Canucks. That's what you <laughs> Blasphemy. (laughs) 
That must be a Toronto thing. We don't do that here. That's not a prairie thing, no. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah, I don't know why she forced, forced you on that. Folk you needy. <laughs> you, did, you, you don't have you a round either, right, with the pennies and stuff. And when you walked out, they looked at each other and said, the dumb American. <laughs> the clincher is having, the best having you say you your talking? name. <laughs> <laughs> we got, like you the, I like the poutine. Food. I tried some. I like the poutine. I tried some when I was in Montreal a couple of years ago. I, I yeah, it was really good. I enjoyed it. Did it have real bean cur treat, uh, cheese curds, or was it like? Uh, yeah, like I think so. It looked, oh, looked like it was pretty legit to me. Um, oh, very good. Uh, yeah. Not the healthiest thing in the world, but hey. Not uh, not at all. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, gravy on fries and gravy's good. I like gravy. <laughs> now you know why. Beaver gravy. It's like a oh. self-fulfilling prophecy at that point, basically. It's the gravy protection uh, agency, yeah. Was it was it Isaac Newton that invented gravy? <laughs> it's does still gravy than go? Veggie Mike, so the the question is, does gravy go with Saskatoon berries? <laughs> you got to blame the British then, Isaac Newton. Was was British. British. Does does gravy go with Saskatoon berries? And not at the same time. That'd be two separate parts of the meal. 
<laughs> well, I... Uh, Yep. Yep. They, they have some. They have some in northern New England too. Hey, we have one down here in California. It's it's not bad. It's not exactly what I call super high class or anything, but it's you know a step above the regular fast food restaurants. It's it's well, how would I describe it? What are we talking about? Slightly, slightly more upscale than a say a Fun sure, Records or something. Oh, yeah. Saint Hubert, Saint Hubert is better. <laughs> like an Applebee's or something. Um, yeah, probably close to that that line. Yeah. I, I have to jump in here. Unfortunately, my uh, my kids need something to eat, so I need to make some dinner for them. So I got to drop off here for a while. Give them some Vegemite. <laughs> Well, I, supper, just order pizza. They're, they're thinning a bit uh, to the east there, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'll have to drop off here for a while. Nice talking to you guys, uh, and uh, maybe I'll catch you later. Yeah. Just order later, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, well, we'll see. Uh, we'll see how it goes. I, um, if if I can, I'll be back in a little while. All right. Uh, talk to you in a bit. See ya. Later. See ya. What I found neat is that he had uh, skies still left. I mean, uh, we're completely in black with stars at this end of the uh, thing zone. All right. <laughs> Where is he yeah. located? Oh. Office Colorado. Yeah, like yeah, yeah, work for the north, I'm in the so. eastern time zone, and it just got dark here when I was on my way home. So he's got to be in central. If it's because it's still, it just got here. dark here. Yeah, the sun's going what down part of Iowa? Pacific here. What part of Iowa are you in? I've been there, actually. <laughs> I spent some time in uh, in a hotel in Bettendorf. The corn so, grows as high as an elephant's eye. Yeah, I've been. Yeah, I had a job there. I, I used to travel in my work, and I found myself in the Quad Cities at one point. No, it was a nice area. It's a nice area. Well, that's fine with me. Hey, John Lori, <laughs> I got a question it's a for uh, yes, John sir. Laurie. Yes. John, you got uh, two email addresses. Uh, do you mind that we uh, send to both of them? We're looking for an uh, opinion uh, here. It means nothing. Yeah, you can send. Uh, I'm not sure which one you got, uh, which ones you've got, but uh, yeah, fire away. Um, I'm okay, actually that only was using one Jim right Brain. now. Your what? Okay. Which addresses do you have? Well, I turned away from that screen, but uh... I think Jim's looking it up. Okay. Okay. Ron can look it up on his uh, on his terminal on his uh, Coco terminal. Hmm. Yeah, he's <laughs> got that uh, he's got that BBSing thing down pat. Who does? Ron, did, where'd you? Uh... Weren't you showing us some uh, B uh, packet BBS stuff a couple, like about a month and maybe two months ago? You mean doing uh, WeFax? You know the shortwave packet stuff. Yeah, it's WeFax. Uh, uh, is that what they call that? WeatherFax uh, stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I remember yeah. you. You had the maps and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was pretty. Uh huh. Yeah, I haven't used the Gmail in a while, so if you want to send a 
If you, can you edit that, or should I edit it, or? Yeah. Well, you, the iCloud, oh, you mean for the backup? Yeah, just delete it, because I pretty much do everything through iCloud, and that's about it. <clears throat> Way to go, saving Jill. server space for uh, Glenn's side there. Huh. <laughs> These days, it doesn't seem to make any difference. My my uh, my computer guy, my hardware guy, put a uh, half a terabyte into my laptop, solid state, and I gotta say, it is fast. Yeah, that makes a huge difference switching from a real hard drive to a solid state drive. Yeah. Yeah, so mechanical hard drive stays remembered. Anybody read my article in the newsletter? Who? Who's asking? I, I yeah. would have at the uh, time it came out. I'm just trying to remember which one of that was. I'm Allison. I uh, wrote the uh, the one about uh, graphic uh, math. Oh, like using sine oh. and cosine and all that stuff? Yeah, cosine and, uh, oh, using Pythagorean, uh, Pythagorean theorem to find a distance. Yeah, it's not too much like homework uh, to me, so I skipped it. No, I'm just kidding. Did, <laughs> did you notice? Did that you was, notice that oh, when I after I read your stuff, after I read your stuff, I uh, I put, got them to put in uh, the Papoose theorem. Did you see that? Uh, a Papoose? The Papoose Wait. theorem. It's in the newsletter. It's right after oh, your okay. article. Oh, let me check it out. Ah. Yeah, that's okay. I mean, you know, it's really hard to get past my own article. Let's see, where did I put this thing? Hey, if you would, please, I've, we've been looking for you. Please uh, go into the chat and uh, pass on to Jim Brain what your email address is. We do not have it. Who, me? Yeah, so oh. we want uh, we want your real email address, if you will, please. You're talking to me, right? Yeah, Allison. Oh, okay. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Uh, oh, uh, Jim Brain, huh? Is that over on the... Uh, oh, I mean, which side? Well, he's, he's on the phone. Oh, I'm on voice on, on phone. phone. <laughs> <laughs> Just text it over on a T9 keyboard. Well, I'm pretty good with the... I'm handy with the computer, but I ain't that handy. Well, if you don't, if you don't mind, if you don't mind saying it, give it to Jim right over the radio here. Oh yeah, yeah, that's easy. That's easy. Uh, uh, just uh, D E N U five at Comcast dot net. That'll get to me. Thank you. And for that, for that, I'll read it for you. The uh -huh. the. the uh, oh, thanks. Chief had uh, three wives. The first wife slept on the hide of a, a oh, an elk. Oh, oh, oh. He gave birth. I've heard this he one. gave birth to a papoose. The second one slept on a bear hide and gave birth to a papoose. The third one slept on the hide of a hippopotamus and gave birth to twins. You got it. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, I, I have heard So the this Papoose one. theorem is, is that the squaw on the height of the hippopotamus is equal to the sum of the squaws on the other two heights. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> yeah, that is as good as Sam Clam's disco any day. Okay. <laughs> you know, the one about I, I, left my, uh, I left my heart in Sam Clam's disco. No, no, never mind. <laughs> Got to be clean. <laughs> yeah, I can't. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I taught uh, ham radio for 13 years, and uh, when I gave oh. that to the kids, all their math grades went up. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice to meet you, Allison. It is nice to meet you, too. My kids figured out that if I... Uh, uh, did not help them with their homework. They had greater ba better grades. Oh. 
<laughs> well, I they actually called me in to compliment me and wondered how I did it. And uh, I did it simply by listening to the kids. The kids, one of them out there of the 13 you might have, will give you gold every week. Nice. <laughs> Too many gems on the line. Too many. Oh, Jason White, that's me. Yeah, my phone died. I had to go on the. I had to get onto my wife's laptop. The phone, my phone died. <laughs> no, no, new uh, laptop. The only other device I got with a camera in it. Hey, Jim, Jerry, I got a question for you. Can right, you, sure. Jim, G Gary. Gary, um, yeah, it's a it's a curse. There's Jim, and then there's Gary, and then there's Jim Gary. Jim Gary, yeah, that's right. Jim, how, um, do you, do you have all of, all of the stuff that you've written in one package that you've like either sent to the archive or that's available for download somewhere, or does it all have to be kind of divvied up into like 4K, 20K, and so on? Um, I pretty much maintain a distro of all of the uh, software for the MC10 on um, my faculty site, and I've been doing it for a number of years. So there so is I a place to go to download? That has everything in in, uh, in um, emulator format, yeah. And I also have all of my files as WAV files in another on a, on a, on a Google space that's open for everyone. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, that's, I can put those links in the, um, the chat for you if you want. Okay, good. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. No, no trouble. Well, this is a worthwhile evening. Okay. Mark, what was in the bag you held up? Oh, me? Yeah. Uh, all my uh, Canadian currency. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Very topical. <laughs> Yeah, one, it's, it's, a it's, it's kind of a special edition toonie. That's a special edition, yeah. We have a lot of collector's coins. They keep changing, like, you know, the images and stuff here to make them more collectible. So and that was a... We also had the two... Like, the toonies are two-tone, too, so it's silver and gold color. Then I have one of those. It looks like a dollar with a penny shoved in the middle. Except it's more gold than brass colored, I think. Yeah, it's part of the newer security plastic bills. Yeah, well, our our bills here in the United States have been changing a lot. They they said they've been doing it to 
kind of thwart uh, counterfeiting. Counterfeiting, yeah. yeah. That's the same reason we went the last one. So. Guys talking about a loony and a toony. What the hell is a loony and a toony? That sounds like a cartoon. <laughs> Not anymore. Yep. They were actually oh, quite yeah, common yeah, there. I've actually got a collection of them in a different room here. Ones and twos actually that... used to have both. So for cost yeah, reasons, they eliminated. The they eliminated. Oh, well, basically because the cost of value. making a $1 or $2 bill and the bill, the old paper bills only used to last maybe eight months, nine months in circulation. You get some rep and bank throw them out. Coins last for decades, so it's just so much cheaper to do it. If you if you had uh, $2 bills from, uh, say, 100 years ago, um, a stack of uh, worth about uh, 200 then is still worth 200 today. Yep. Up until very recently, yes. <laughs> now that they're trying to get them out of circulation, they're actually making them basically zero value as far as the bank is concerned. Uh, but if oh, you're really? Into collecting, if you're into collecting as a collector, then they're actually worth more than two or or one dollar anyway. So keep them for that how reason. How can they don't, do don't that? I don't, I don't understand know. how that they can do that. That was a surprise to me because I wasn't expecting that because I had a whole whack load of twos and I had a bunch of the very common twos. And you know, figuring that you know, once they took them out of circulation, that they'd become worth money as collectibles and stuff. And then, when they decided that they were going to make it not legal tender anymore, for the you know, as, as opposed to collectibles, then I went and I turned some of the more common ones in. And I just kept the more rare ones, like the 1954 issues and stuff like that. So, you still have, have you paper two wow. Canadian yeah, money. up to that point. Up until they did that, it was the face value. Now you have to sell it as a collector, or it's just it's just paper. Have you seen the latest Canadian money? It has uh, Martin Short and as the Queen. <laughs> Martin Short as the really? Queen. Yeah. Really? I thought that was Leonard Anybody Nimoy as the Queen. Anyone who's from Canada Sorry. knows who Martin Short is, of course. He's he's basically like uh, the most famous person in Canada, isn't he? Well, one of them is a Jim Carrey, John Candy, Martin Short. Oh, Jim Carrey. I, what happened to Jim <laughs> Carrey? I was just thinking the other day, what the hell happened to that guy? He's a whack job now. Yeah. What was the last he started acting he again recently. Oh, he's well, he was Dr. He was Dr. Robotnik in the Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Bill oh, yes, Shatner, right. the Sonic movie was the last thing. Turn 90. Yeah, Shatner just had his 90th birthday. Yeah. He wasn't too far behind Christopher Plummer, who they kind of like worked together in the 50s in Montreal. Michael J. Fox? Lloyd. Christopher Lloyd. Yeah, he's Canadian. Yeah. Yeah, I think he is Canadian. I don't see how they could make a Sonic movie without having Sonic do a nude scene, though. Uh, <laughs> that's just, you know, North America has got this thing going on for Sonic, and I don't know if you've ever... Oh. If you've Not at my house. Into those regions of the internet, but there are some people who have a really unhealthy obsession with that character. <laughs> we have a place oh, oh, called yeah, Sonic. Yeah, I picked up a Sega eat. CD recently. So I have Sonic CD to play. What is that rule number again? Uh, 34. 34. 34. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one. Just about everything winds up that way. But, yes, uh, Sonic and Pikachu are both like, uh, uh, you know, people are just a little too obsessed with those characters. Whatever happened to Coco the Cat or whatever it was? Pikachu. Like I wanted to mention to, to Ron that maybe the, his Taz obsession is just a little bit shady, you know? <laughs> well, I'd like to come up with something similar to him, but the, the cat has yeah. died because its tail was crimped and it got infected and it killed it. Oh, that's yep. sad. Yeah. I don't know about that. I mean, it's kind of like Bill the Cat from the Opus cartoons. He had a kinked up tail, too. Of course, he was a cocaine addict, but. <laughs> yeah, that cat had a lot of problems. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, guys. Iowa? Yep, yep. 
Yeah, Iowa, where uh, Nebraska and South Dakota meet. Three points. Yep. Oh. Yep. Hey guys. And then Brian, you weren't on. You weren't on the show today, so I'm imagining you're going to have like five thousand things to show off next week. Right? <laughs> <laughs> the pile is growing. Yes. So. <laughs> Yeah, I have a question, a Coco question. I have a color computer, too, over there without a connection to a TV. Can I take an, a RCA connector that connects to coax and hook it to coax cable, hook it to a TV? Will that work? Yes. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yes. Get a, a as as connector right to channel. RCA. Sounds good. They still Thanks. sell those uh, F connector to RCA adapters. As a matter of fact, that's and the best way to, to do RF. Yeah, or composite. Through terminals. Right. Okay. Right. Yeah, I mean, I, I saw the one that the, uh, the pops on, this, on Amazon. So. How is it matched up with the uh, RCA connector on the little switch box thingy? you got to protect that cable going to the TV and make sure it's... Um, shielded. Lead lined? Yeah, shielded. Yeah, here's the, here's the one I use. Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was gonna buy. The exact same thing. Yeah. Yeah, then you can use a decent coax cable to okay. feed well, that. That's, yeah, that's what I was gonna do. Nobody's sharing. I I have that too. <laughs> Over sharing. Hey, you, you you don't need that balling device to to match up the impedances so much. Just wires will do it. Well, the Coco puts out 75 ohm. Right, but then they had the, if you're going to Twin Leads or something, they had the 300 Yeah, the switch box switch thing. Box. Ball thing, but I just bypassed that and went straight to the Twin Yeah, I mean, that's a, what, I'm using a Sega uh, connection like that now. I, I take it off my Sega uh, game, but it, I get a lot of distortion, so I wanted to make something better. Then there, there's always that VCR. I am Bob. <laughs> well, uh, I'm only taking up my screen, right? I'm not taking oh, up anybody, everybody else's. right now. Yeah, you, you. Yeah, you're filling up the whole screen. Yeah, we see it. It's a black screen. Okay. Take him down. Well, I'm gonna take. I'm gonna take it down. But this is. Uh, what I've been working on for many days, uh, Star Trek. Okay. Back to normal? Okay. Okay. Stay black. Wow. Yep. Just the border of the window. Oh, that's disgusting. Okay. I'll take it up with uh, John Mark uh, offline next time. Okay. Yeah. Man, who has a TV with the with the 300 ohm input? <laughs> I still have a TV. Yeah, I've got a hybrid TV monitor that has 300 ohm flat terminals on it.
<laughs> you might be a redneck. <laughs> yeah, because when the consoles went bad, you just use it as a stand for your next TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, I just put up my I put up my uh, my MC10 emulator to show you a wood grain TV there. But now I need to turn it off. I, yeah, we're just seeing a gray screen. Oh, okay. Sorry, I turned it off. Yeah, maybe. You already shared it. Did it did it come up momentarily? I'll yeah, we saw it, it again. and then it went away. Yeah, there Here it, is. it is. Okay, very good. Yeah, it's probably like a 13 or 14 inch or something. It looks like it's on UHF. <laughs> now how do I turn that off? Okay, stop sharing. No, it can't be. Hey anyway, Jim, turn that off there's a guy named of uh, Rich Dale who yeah. uh, reworked reworked the TV by pulling, if you will, the uh, old electronic guts out and put a flat screen behind the screen. Looks very good, and of course it's up to date. It's all digital and all that other good stuff. Star yeah. Wars. I re yes. <laughs> That's perfect. Yeah, I sold a lot of laser discs at VCF Midwest as well. So people just really love laser discs. Well, that and they wanted to see, see the version of Star Wars that wasn't all messed up. Yeah. Well, you want to see Star Trek or uh, Flintstones on there. Hot shot first. <laughs> oh, good. Uh, excellent. Yeah, I kind of forgot about the laser discs, and seeing that going there actually kind of got me inspired. Because you're not collecting enough yet, Brian, or? My wife is having a bunch of media converted to uh, thumb drives. Uh, 
about uh, 40, 40 pieces for around 600 bucks. But she came across, uh, I think, four VHF discs that seemed to be labeled Glenside. So I may have acquired them when I was secretary years ago. She's found them, and we got to turn them back into Glenside, see if uh, there's some happiness on them. So we got to find somebody in the group that's got a VHF VHS player, and uh, we'll get those uh, cassettes to them. Not yet. No, there's a gray window on the right. For us. Yeah, it's like if something's covering it up. Yeah. Yeah, we have your desktop and just a gray square. That seems. I know it's a blue jeans problem because everybody who's trying to share is getting that same effect. Uh, yeah, I'm getting the same. Yep. Yeah, there we go. Okay. Yes. Electronic hearth. I have another question for you guys. Um, I'm looking for a way to save programs, and I see they have a thing called a Coco SDC mm -hmm. uh, from Coco yep. Wares. Does that plug in the side cartridge slot, yep. or how does that work? Yep, plugs in the side cartridge slot, and an SD card plugs into it. Okay, sounds good. Is that a, a good place to buy them from or not? I got mine from uh, from it says Ed. It says dot com is what came up. I don't know if that's a good place or. That's fifty bucks. How about how about Cloud Nine? Cloud Nine. It doesn't sell SDCs. Ed Snyder sells it. Caveat. The zipster zone. Oh, yeah. yeah, the zipster zone. Okay. Yeah. That's the main manufacturer of them, so. Oh, I got all kinds of oh, that's Snyder stuff. <laughs> it's Snyder. I don't have uh, a Coco God with a small G. Yeah, he's definitely a, the hardware god. Designed a Coco VGA. He designed a, the Gimme X. He manufactures and sells the Coco SDC. He put a Coco two together. MPIs, keyboards. keyboards. <laughs> you name it, he makes it. I so does and, 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 uh, stuff too. Place I should buy my hardware. Then, is what you're telling me. <laughs> oh, I've I've bought a lot of stuff from. Yeah, a good majority from, of it from, anyway. Okay. That's a good guy.
drive wire, drive wire, drive wire. No, just yeah. software. You you can load it. You can load it in directly off, say, cassette or something like that too. But you have to reload it every time you power it up. Then. Right. That's yep. that's the way I'm doing it right now. Yep. It does. <laughs> Yeah, it carries nice. forward. So if you ever got a Coco three, it works with that too. So I mean, you're you're future proofed yourself. You can use it with any of the Cocos. Yeah, I mean the um, problem is, you know, my dad had all that stuff when we bought the system, but over the years he's thrown a lot out. So really, all I got is the Coco, a couple of joysticks, uh, two cartridges, and you know, so I'm basically Cocoa, starting from scratch. Well, and another the thing, the SEC has only been around since like fourteen, two thousand fourteen. That's nice. And all the software comes on DSK files, so that's a that's a good. Yeah, I mean, I think it's wrong. I'm going to go just because I can. You know, it's at least newer technology as far as the. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. very. It's also very got a fast. nice menu program that comes with it too, so it makes it easy to select programs and boot things up too. That you don't have okay. to sit there and type a bunch of stuff. There it is. You can do both. Right. Because oh, I, still, I still got to go through his basement for some right? more stuff. Pre right? President Jim, uh, zip, uh, dog on it. Ed, you said Snyder is. Yeah. yeah, he is Zipster, right? Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Zipster zone, yeah. Okay. A member. Two Ps. Yeah, no, I, f I found the website and everything, so I'm good. Thanks. Yeah. The only problem with Ed and get catching the SDCs is you have to catch them when they're not sold out because he tends to sell them as quick as he makes them. The main thing he needs to make is another him. Yeah. We, yeah, we did have a second store so. start, starting now. They were supposed to be rejiggering that and passing it off to somebody else, but I don't know if that ever happened. Over. Doesn't he make them 20 or 25 at a time? The waiting list. Yeah. yeah. I mean, he has an order place, right? The order online. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's just whether he has them in stock, because if he makes a batch, usually it's gone within a week. Oh, I see what you're And then he may not get back to getting around to doing that particular piece of hardware again for another you know month or two. So I see. He yeah. actually has uh, um, STCs available right now. Oh, you're in that lucky week period then. <laughs> I was going to say, this is David. I just looked on his site, and I thought there were some on there. Hey, since you guys are shop talking, can I ask you a question, too? Can you guys hear me okay? Okay. Okay, so quick question. Uh, with the drive wire, do you have to run that on a host system with uh, serial cable, right? Or a yeah. USB to serial adapter, yeah. Right. 
and that and the host system that, that has going to have a Java requirement, yeah. Uh, depends which version yeah. of DriveWire you're running. Oh, well, that's true. Okay. DriveWire four to do. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. I didn't three know is the Thank Python, you know. right? Is three the Python and four the the uh, no three three Java? and four are both Java? It's Pi DriveWire by uh, Michael Furman. That's the yeah. yeah. Pi DriveWire is basically a three with parts of four, and he, he's gradually adding more of four as he gets you know through it and updates the software, so it, it's slowly catching up. Because the other problem yeah, with the, drive, the Java the version is it requires a fairly old version of Java to run. The newer versions of Java won't even run properly. So, Well, and that's my concern is that there's a lot of, nothing against Java, but there's there's been a lot of recent last couple of years difficulty running Java on certain platforms just because of vulnerabilities and stuff. Yeah. Okay, so one well, other question. I'm sorry to, sorry to keep going with this, but it's been a long time, so... You know, I have a, a hard drive, a 20 megabyte hard drive, with the controller that was given that you know, somebody sold to me a long time ago that I cherish. So, you know, I haven't turned it on in a while. I was going to get my cocoa out and turn it on. My thoughts are it's going to be difficult to get that working. But my Not question sure. is, with the Coco SPC, can you run Nitro Nitro OS 9 like from? Oh Do yeah. You have like a large image like in the Coco oh, yeah. SDC. Okay. <laughs> and and run maybe like a 40 megabyte, you know, a large If you get the ease of use image. edition of Nitrous 9, you get 128 meg for your primary drive and you can have a second drive for your own stuff for also 128 meg which gives you 256 meg. And you can go beyond that if you want to start doing uh, you know, multi-sector clusters and stuff. Okay. So if worst came to worst, I could still do the same thing I was doing without that hard disk. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Thank you. Thanks for that time. Oh yeah. Yeah. Unless you have a multi pack, yeah. then you then you can. Yeah, no, I have a multi-pack, too. I don't know if it's... Um, as long as the drive hasn't seized up. I mean, that's what happened to mine. It just, you know, it was in storage for too long and basically wouldn't fire up after it would spit up, so... That's what I'm... That's what... That's what my fear is. I have a, uh, another uh, uh, vintage enthusiast club nearby. They said the same thing. They said, I'll be surprised if it spins up after that long, so we'll see. Let's give it a gentle Indeed. tap. David, I did it. I, I do have to say though, uh, when David made that comment, I did enjoy that little twinkle that appeared in Curtis's eye when he when he started talking about that thing. And oh, it was kind of nice to get those. Well, sales for me came right up. Yeah. Oh, it's really great though. That's why I said I really cherish that still uh, because it taught me a lot about it, and uh, it taught me a lot about OS nine, and um, it was really great. I really enjoyed it. So. Yeah, and it's progressed quite a bit since the uh, old hard drive days, too. So there's some new stuff there for you to fiddle with on it, too. Remember, on, David, you're just you're teasing Curtis now. So. Let's remember, talk about OS 9. Guys, one coming out in a week or two. So. <laughs> <laughs> remember, guys, if you've had uh, stuff turned off for years and years and years, and you want to be sure to uh, power it up again and not blow something out, put about a 60-watt light bulb in series with the power line. If there's something shorted out like a cap in uh, your device, the light will simply come up to, to bright like 60 watts. Leave it on there for about 10 seconds and you might notice it drops drastically. That's the short being cleared out of the capacitor without destroying it. So remember to do that. 100, uh, 60 watt light bulb in series. And you can make it different sizes uh, for different loads that you might have. Mister, because that's from a that's from a thirty seven year old Motorola radio designer. 
Jim Brain, behind you to your to your right, to our left, is a. Uh, can you describe that machine? Is that like a for drawing blueprints and stuff, or? Monitor. Yeah. <laughs> I have a plotter that cuts vinyl because I was in the sign business. 36 inch. You That's can make some one. awesome shrinky dinks with that. Shrinky dinks. You ain't never heard of no shrinky dinks? Oh. Forgive me. It's like a plastic thing. You cut it out, put it in the oven, it shrinks, it looks real pretty. You wear it like jewelry. Not, not at my house. <laughs> Talking about shrinky dinks, cuts too close to the home in Canada. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> it gets very cold out right here. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't be using that way. Uh, be, being, being, being six seven, I don't shrink nothing. <laughs> Yeah, I think he's ordering the SDC right now, so. Uh... <laughs> we forgot to tell him to just download the ultimate SDC thing off the archive, too, so you can get a huge start on your software. Oh, yeah, that's right. Then he's got to learn how to flash those banks. Will take my cocoa from my cold. No one. Yeah, I put some info on there. Nope. There's only uh, one posting on the uh, MC10 group. Uh, somebody faked a high score, and they're asking me how to figure it out. James Host is the um, MC10 group admin. He He's faked some kind of high score post. And <laughs> that's the only action. Okay. Yeah, put it in Discord, too. David, could you mute? Probably the 12, MC10 yeah, channel. The non-existent <laughs> MC10 channel. 427, channel. I think, is probably best. Um, <laughs> do we have, we have an MC10 channel, don't we? Games okay. General, MC10, oh, emulator, I couple play. <laughs> MC10 probably under hardware, maybe? Or oh, that's hardware. <laughs> It'll be under miscellaneous. Jim Gary, do you do you also have a Cocos? I mean, you I know, do. Cocoa three, Cocoa two. I got one of these oh, big one. gray things. Yep. Here, yeah. Yeah. Yo. I thought it was an MC10 because it, you know, it's got this little chiclety keyboard, but I was mistaken. Yeah. You can make a uh, a thing to fit on the keyboard there with all the graphics. <laughs> yeah, it's true. Oh. I'm not used to those oh. big keys. Uh. John Mark Bobley, I got a question for you. I'm looking for a piece of uh, software, if you will, 
and uh, John Mark, tell me what I need that uh, uh, Chris Hawks has to play Star Trek. Oh, um, it's called a speech sound pack, but you need it to work with your emulator. Has anybody got the software that uh, does that for me for my emulator, VCC? Isn't that just a plug-in well, for as VCC? As far as I'm aware, you VCC mounted in the mouse. It's it, it VCC would be, does. Well, it not would be something to stick in slot zero. Is there another emulator that has it? MAME has it. Supports the MAME has it. Sound oh, so if you ran the MAME emulator, Bob, then you could get it. If I ran what? MAME. I don't know how I to spell it. MAME. I, I think I want it for VCC. Hasn't anybody done it for VCC? No. No. Oh, Which holy cow. What do you want it to the do? The problem with the speech and sound pack is it has a microcontroller and its own ROM, so it, it would take a lot of work. Oh. Yeah, it's true, Ron. I was looking for that one the other day, and I couldn't find it myself, so it's out there if I can't find okay. it. Okay, thank you. That's a good input. I don't have to waste time looking for it. Yeah. John, John Mark tells me it plays uh, Roddenberry's wife's voice. No, no, it doesn't. It doesn't play her voice. What'd you say it played? Um, Somebody's grandma. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm not, I'm not sure I, I know what it sounds like, but it doesn't sound like Major Barrett. Um, the speech, you're talking about the speech sound pack? Yeah, it's not a. It's not a. It doesn't produce waveforms. It, it's like a computer-generated sound. Yeah, it sounds like Stephen Hawking, not like, like Major yeah. Barrett. <laughs> yeah, oh, like a real human voice. More like Stephen Hawking. Right. Exactly. I used to have one of those things. It it, it was kind of cool, uh, but you had to use a uh, forty phonemes, and really, if you type stuff in in plain English, it'd be hardly recognizable. It, you had to really think in phonemes to work with that thing. Yeah, it's yeah, uh, I have say. one and it's it's really it's really kind of buggy. So it, it's good for speech, but but uh I tried to do a project with Nick Morenti's and it doesn't do music very well. So the sound part of it is not very good. It's okay. Got got problems in the firmware. Right, but unfortunately, that's behind a microcontroller. Yeah, a PIC controller or something like that, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. The documentation on the speech the documentation on the speech sound was slightly inaccurate, so it, it took quite a bit of work to understand the whole system. And then some of the features don't work, especially with multi tone like audio. So it it just it's it's supposed to allow you to do like four tones, but really it doesn't work. You can do one tone. Oh, I take exception to all this. I think the device is great. <laughs> well, I think I think as far as speech goes, it's it's cool. But I I don't know. Maybe maybe I just 
didn't understand. Well, it's only a three voice chip, so um, right. now the the stored playback of of uh, notes is problematic. Um, but there's always a direct note, direct mode to talk directly to the sound chip. Um, but of course, that adds the layer you were all talking about correctly. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know there was a way to access the sound chip directly. It, there is a way. Yeah, there's yep. sample code in the Discord. Ah, that's. Cool. I'll check it out. I think it's, it's what Pitchfork Two does. It, is... it does multi-voice music on it. Yeah, you it's... still go through the pick, but you get direct access to the registers. That's, that's cool. Pick. I didn't. I didn't know about that, so I'll. I'll look into it. Wasn't that device kind of expensive when for when it was you know a new device? It was ninety bucks, I think, originally. Plus the yeah, multi pack. Yeah. Right. Okay. Two hundred and some, wasn't it? What one fifty? Uh. Original the original price of the three was one. Yeah, it was cheaper by the time the Coco three came out. Right. Two nineteen, I think original was the original price, but then it came down. The one ninety nine. There was a long time when came down to ninety nine bucks. There was a time when every Coco thing was about three hundred bucks. So hard drive, Coco, multi pack, three hundred bucks. <laughs> yep. Yeah, it took about yeah. five years. Yeah. <laughs> right. You had to do a lot of paper routes. I just, I'm just taking a look in the RSC, uh, RSC 11 catalog from 1984 when the multipack was considered new and it was 179.95. Good gosh. I wonder, wonder what Chris Fox was getting for his. He had a multipack. <laughs> No, no, they've been going for like three hundred. I, I think you have to be I extremely think, lucky. They're still, uh, they're still, I believe, ninety nine dollars from uh, Cloud Nine. No, no, not for new. Yep. No, no. Uh, he ran out of those a while back, and now a lot of times he'll have to source off of eBay and repair. And so okay. it's it's the cost of whatever he can get it from eBay on. Yeah, I understand. He may have had a carton or two of two, you know, two Coco threes together, brand new, never opened. But he said at that time that there was no way he would accept, you know, anything but a very high price for it. Back in the yeah. 1990s, I okay. bought a um, Coco three from um, Cloud Nine for fifty bucks. Yeah, I got my Coco so they were here for fifteen dollars from a secondhand store. It was right before everything kind of blew up. So a Coco three at that time was probably a hundred bucks, but I got it for fifteen. And Jim, you were asking about prices well, uh, when the Coco three came out, and the multi pack had dropped down to ninety nine ninety five by that time, but the speech sound pack was still eighty nine. <laughs> Uh, let me see what that was. Still more than Amiga. You know, in the, in the, in the mid nineties, Drive, Drive Zero was uh, three hundred dollars for the uh, Slimline. I'm assuming the five hundred one. Yeah, the forty track single sided. In the, the mid nineties, five. In the mid nineties, Coco was going out. 
in the 1985 catalog, the multi-pack interface was 179.95. Well, guys, we bought an bucks. SDC, just so you know. <laughs> there you go. You, yeah. you, will you might as well it. start downloading off the Color Computer Archive right now. Get the ultimate pack, and right. that'll get you set up for a good start. Good. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah, you put it in, turn it on, and it goes right into the menu. Nice. Yeah. Though you can shut that off if you really want to. Yeah. I yeah, because doesn't it look for an, an executable, like an auto exec? Yeah, and you can bring that up manually with the EXP command if you don't want it to auto boot. You know, right. The latest updates to that thing are really cool. You know, it's cool to pop in your, um, if you have two different Cocos going and you uh, are one place on one card and then you take it to the other machine, it's still there. It remembers. And that's kind of uh, real convenient. So, yeah. Plus, uh, uh, Stevie, was, Stevie was telling me how you can set it up. There's a, a Wi-Fi SD card you can buy. A Wi-Fi enabled SD card. But what do you do? What do you do with that three-inch antenna that you have to have on it? <laughs> but like Jim's saying, though, that the Wi-Fi one's nice because on my PC, when I download something, I can have my Coco running with the SD card, and I just have a drive map to it, and I can just copy the file while it's like Coco's on, and go out of a menu and go back into that menu, and the file that I download is there. It's it's nice to have to power the power off the Coco or reboot the SD card at all. So but is it worth the three hundred dollars? <laughs> well, they are—they have gone up in price, but I think I paid forty for mine. So, but, uh, yeah, but it's I, not too I, bad. I, what's, it, I like, what's it worth to you? But I like you? the convenience. Yeah. But I like the convenience, though. I mean, I really like that. So. Yeah, it kind of adds somewhat sort of Wi-Fi capability to the Coco, to at least for file transfers and such. Right. And you, You technically, couldn't you use it for Wi-Fi if you wrote the right software for the Coco to connect to the card the same way a, your PC does? So how are you using the like when he's when he's he was talking about transferring files between the PC and the so how are you doing I, how are you connecting to the cards radio capability through the connector Well yeah but How is it? Is it mapping it as a drive? Tell us how it works.
I see. Right. Yeah, it's not a general Wi-Fi. Does it show up right, as a Wi-Fi could, drive? You could read and you could read and write to a file, right? And then you could use that. Yeah. Does it say it's a Wi-Fi drive? Okay. Yeah, because like on my on my computer, I just um, it it's just it's a, a map drive. I have it mapped as a Z drive. It's just you know one nine two one six eight one. In my case, it's one dot eighty. And for your network, it could be something totally different. But on my computer, it's just it, it's going to um, uh, the the www root you know uh, portion of that drive, and I just map it as a Z drive. And so just like you might click on the C drive of your Windows PC, I click on the Z drive. And I see the folder structure of the Coco SDC. And if I download something from the internet, I can just go right to a folder, copy, paste, and then go over to the Coco, and it's there without even having to turn the SDC card off. No, no sneaker net required. No sneaker it's, net required. Jim, it's, it's an SD, it's a SDC connector, right? That you buy yeah. out of the store anytime. Okay, well, I'm thinking of my, uh, I'm thinking of my uh, 2002 Hewlett Packard uh, desktop machine, and it's got all kinds of uh, connectors, and one of them is for the SDC card. I plug it in there, and like the man says, like Rod says, it becomes a Z drive or anything else I choose to call it. If it's directly connected to your PC. Yeah. Yeah. Th this way you can connect it to the Coco and the Coco SDC, but you can still access it from your PC wirelessly. So you can drop files on it while right. your Coco is up and running. There's yeah. a config file. There's a config file on the SD card that you have to set up, and you have to put the parameters of your local Wi-Fi in there. So when you power on the Coco SDC, it fires up this SD card and it connects to your Wi-Fi connection that you've set up. So there's a little bit of pre-configuration you have to do. Okay. So there's a little controller in that ch chip and then there's a uh, little tiny antenna too, huh? Antenna. Mm -hmm. Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. No. I think it's a, the, the, is it that, is that, are you talking about the, I think it's that config file, that config that's down at the bottom there. SDCX. Yeah. Yeah, let's hear. Oh, that's the SEC let's, itself. Let me look Boot here. Looks What's like Boot X? Well, it's a text <laughs> file. Uh, config. Well, in the config file, a text file? Big file. Let's see. <clears throat> Yeah, I was just going to fire mine up. There it is. 
I've had mine set up for so while. Yep. There it is. Yep. We're not, we're not seeing it. Yeah, we're not seeing that. Help her get to bed? No. Probably have to reshare. We're, we're with still the seeing the, when the Explorer window. Thanks. Your time has expired. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. DSLR. Explorer window. Refresh, yeah. So, so Jim, how, how much of a radius do you think you have, um, you know, to be able to pick up the signal? Okay, yeah. Antenna. Yeah. Right. So, so you couldn't be up upstairs and expect a hook to your. Um, Okay. All right. Yeah. yeah. And it's inside a shielded SD slot, which has that metal shield around it that's grounded and all of that. It's actually kind of impressive. It's intended for pretty short range.
you're doing good. <laughs> you just have to set it up so you can dump files to it from your phone, that's all. That would work on the MC-10, too, on the new new device. Yep. So it doesn't have to be – does it have to be in something? Could it be sitting on the table and you can write to it? So it has to have power. Right, because okay. it gets power from the device it's plugged right. into. Right. It's basically just a file server, with, you know, on, built onto an SD card. Well, how how is the um, RF work on your um, debit card? It's not plugged in. Induction. Inductance. Induction. Just. Right. The same way, like the char the cordless charging on your phone works. It's when you when you hold your device up to the reader, it's there's a deduction coil in there that's putting out uh, an electromagnetic magnetic wave, which is being converted into electricity in the device and powering it to to operate to. Send over the information it's sent. Yeah. And that's like, why you have to do it in very I close proximity because that doesn't go out that far. Right. Good question, though. Yeah. SD card, yeah. So, so yeah. These, yeah, these, was... don't, these don't come in two parts then, like uh, it doesn't have the little um, f small form factor stuck in it also. It's all just one card, right? Nope, standard SD side. Size.
Ah, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ask the brain. Yeah, I think uh, uh, Stevie did a demo with it where he was using that SD card with John Strom's um, uh, disk tool, where he was able to then edit the file on the PC and then with Ed's tool, then by using the map drive that he had uh, to, the, to the SD card, bring it over to the Coco and then immediately open, run that program right on the Coco without having to power anything off. You could just bring files back and forth between them. Yeah. And it is kludgy because I have a Mac and it's got an SD card slot in the back. So I got to reach around, grab the SD card, pull it out, uh, you know, eject it, pull it out, stick it back in the Coco. I mean, it's kind of kludgy to go back and forth. You know, I notice I do a lot of uh, swapping back and forth with my cards because I have backups. And uh, uh, the one with a dongle that plugs in, my it wore out. And I'll tell you what works good is sometimes laptops have a little slot in the front of their um, in the front of the computer, and then when you when you stick it in, it clicks. And I think those are are sturdy and last a long time compared to. Uh, these cheapy jobs, you know, um, well, you can't, I don't think you can see. Yeah, like you showed us. This here works okay, but the, the other one that I have is um, this one. Yeah. I can't see it good. Anyway. And, and this wore out. And it also has a slot for the smaller one. Just from in and out, in and out, I think it just uh, wears out. So th th that would like, be a good solution. Sounds was, like another need for uh, uh, mineral oil, okay? Yeah. Mineral, mineral oil, oil does, doesn't conduct electricity, evidently. Yes. It, it, uh, yes, it can. It, uh, the connector will touch the other connector, the... the uh, Mineral oil will move aside, and if you plug it in a couple of times, you'll you'll feel what the mineral oil's doing. Like if but you had an audio sure cable, and you, out, will it? you'd hear noise. Put mineral oil on it, and the noise will go away. Hmm. You're trying to you're trying to figure it out. <laughs> We had a product in 1970 and earlier. We had a Quasar TV, and then we had the Micor radio. And they were all boards were connectors that had connected to other connectors. And we put that stuff on there, never lost a connection after afterward. So it doesn't connect sideways to the you know, prong sticking out. You know what I mean? <laughs> What I'm, what I'm saying is what, wherever you see that gold plating, take yeah. a toothpick, a wooden toothpick, dip it in the mineral oil, and smear it on the gold part of the connector. Plug it in and out a couple times, you'll feel it doing its work. Things will go in and out real easy, and you won't tear them up. 
Oh, mineral oil. It's a laxative you buy from a drugstore. Yeah. So if it makes that part of you work, it'll make these connectors work too. <laughs> With my old wood too. It's really nice for restoring wood. Your what? It's it's good for restoring wood. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, mineral oil is great. What you don't want to do, do not get mineral oil on any rubber. Keep it away from your keyboards, stuff like that. The rubber will will swell to two or three times its original size. You don't want to do that. So it's metal to metal and keep it there. The Jodie Foster movie? He talked about that movie. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's. Well, good luck with that. <laughs> that, that, was, that was an enjoyable movie. <laughs> 